I'm going to give this print away at the end of the episode. Stay tuned. This is it. This is going to be my last darkroom video for a long time. Forgive me, it's Canada, it's been cold outside, it's been dark outside, hard to go out and shoot. So I do spend a lot of time in the winter time printing. And I have taken you through my processes. I've shown you how I develop my film, how I make contact sheets. And today I'm also gonna be helping a friend out. She's starting a new darkroom. And for anybody who's also starting a new darkroom, I'm gonna show you my steps of printing your first eight by 10 print or printing a print. So if you are a darkroom veteran, this video is not for you. If you know your way around a darkroom and how to print, this video is not for you. This is really for people starting out or starting to wanting to build a little darkroom and wanting to make themselves a print after they go out and shoot. So I'm gonna show you what you need to start out and the steps to make an eight by 10 print and it's super easy. In my last video, I gave you guys a tour of my darkroom, and now I'm gonna show you how to make an eight x 10 print. This is my new Fujimoto G70 and larger. This does medium format. It's a really slick little unit. It has the power and the timer right in the base, and I really like how this thing works and uses and, and uh, how it goes up and down. So it's a slick little and larger. I'm gonna make an eight by 10 print from a two and a quarter Hasselblad negative out of this. So you're gonna need some sort of enlarger. And enlargers are actually harder to find now. They've become popular, working in the darkroom has become much more popular. So before you could get these things for nothing, actually somebody gave me this great enlarger with a great lens and this whole unit for free. But now you could probably sell this for a couple hundred bucks on eBay or, or anywhere else. So you're gonna to have to look around and find yourself an enlarger and an enlarger that will do the format that you're working on. So if you're shooting uh, two and a quarter, if you're shooting medium format, you're gonna need a medium format enlarger. If you're just shooting 35 millimeter, then you can get away with a 35 millimeter enlarger. And if you're shooting eight by 10 or five by seven or four by five, you're gonna need a much larger, a large format enlarger to be able to enlarge from those negatives. And to develop prints, you're gonna need three basic chemicals. You're gonna need a developer, a stop bath and fix. I use Ilford Multigrade Developer and I mix that at one to nine. And then I use a stop bath and I use just basically a splash, about 50 milliliters, a liter of water. And then I use Ilford Rapid Fixer and I mix that at one to four. And that's it. Those are the three chemicals that you're gonna to need to uh, develop a print. With your enlarger, you're going to need either a color head where you can dial in the filtration and dial in the contrast, or the Ilford filter pack that you can put under the lenses that will give you the contrast, or there's also enlargers that will give you the contrast right out of the head as well. They'll give you from zero all the way to contrast number five. After you've picked your negative that you wanna print, you have to take out your carrier for your enlarger and you have to place the negative into the enlarger. I give it a little bit of dust off to blow off any dust, but you have to really watch when you use that that you don't shake the can because some of that stuff from inside the can can blow off onto the negative. So you have to be careful with that. And then you insert your uh, neg carrier and it'll hold the negative flat and then you'll line it up in the enlarger. So the first thing you have to do is you have to turn on the focus and I'm just gonna make an eight by 10 print. So you wanna uh, get the enlarger head to where you want it and then you wanna start doing a rough focus and then a fine focus on the image. Then what I'll do is I will use the back of a contact sheet, an eight by 10 contact sheet that, it, that is white, and I will put it in the easel. I can see exactly how uh, the image is gonna fit and where it's gonna fit, and then I can center it from there. And now after I have my image centered, I get my focus loop 
and then I do a fine tune focus and you focus on the grain of the film not the actual not the actual image and then you should get the sharpest photo from that then I stop my lens down to f8 one of the reasons I like making contact sheets is because you can start to judge the contrast on contact sheets with this contact sheet I print all my contact sheets at a two and a half grade filter so you can see here that we're gonna print this photograph here and it's very close to being good right now so I'm gonna start with the two and a half grade filter and then from there we'll see what the print looks like this Fujimoto I have I have a list here of the grade of paper that I'll use and what I have to dial into the color head to get that grade. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down a sheet of paper or half a sheet of paper, and we are gonna give it about four exposures, each exposure at five seconds. And we're gonna use this piece of cardboard to cover up part of the strip, and we're gonna go five seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and then give it 20 seconds. And from there, we can judge where our exposure will be at F8 at a grade two and a half paper. And we can see that is way too dark. So back to the drawing board, we do another test strip and we reduce the time dramatically. Now we have a look at the new test strip and it's much, much closer. I actually made it at F11 instead of F8, so I dropped it by a stop. And then these in exposure increments are only two seconds. This is two, four, six, eight. And then you can see the real nice whites and grays are right around here, around four seconds, which I kind of want a longer exposure because it's hard to do things in such a short exposure as four seconds. I'm actually gonna put the lens down to F16 and then I'm gonna make this an eight second exposure. One of the things you wanna to do too is when you're developing and using stop bath and fixer is you wanna agitate the film a little bit or the print a little bit. And that's just by gently rocking the trays backing back and forth and getting that either developer stop bath or fix moving around over that print. So this print now is looking pretty good. What I'd like to do is dodge a little bit of this, these badlands back here in the mirror. And I would probably like to just burn down a little bit of the sky, just make it a touch darker so that church pops out. But I kind of like the detail and I kind of like the whites in that. I think that looks pretty good. Dodging and burning, this is what I use. I use a little dodging one like this. When I say dodge, I mean I hold back light. So I would go in here and just shake it and always shake it. You don't want to just hold it because then it'll make a mark there. I would hold back a little bit of light quickly like that. And if I'd want to dodge there, hold that back a little bit. So this is how I dodge. I hold back the light a little bit so that the print becomes lighter in that area. In terms of burning, you can use a piece of cardboard with a hole in it and you can burn. But what I like to use is just my hands. I put my hands right underneath the bulb like this and then I can make a circle and then I can kind of burn in and I can give the print more light where I want it a little darker. So I use my hands to burn in and I use this little dodging wand to dodge my prints. And just a note about contrast and grades on paper. As you can see here, this is a grade one, which is very flat and there's not a lot of contrast here. Here you can see this is a grade two and a half, which this image looks proper to me. It's got the great tones between the white and the black. And here is a grade five, which is very contrasty. Rich, deep blacks with no detail and whites that are blown out as well, which isn't right for this photograph. When you are printing, you have to decide which grade is gonna work best for your photograph. And there, that's looking pretty good. That's just a really nice work print. I mean, that's just a really nice print. And after you fix it, uh, it just needs a minute and a half, two minutes in the fix after you fix it. Then these RC prints, you can wash them quickly and it only takes about 10 minutes to wash them. 
And, but if you're doing fiber-based prints, of course, it takes three minutes in the developer and then still a couple minutes in the fix and then you have to wash them for a lot longer. You have to wash them for about 30 minutes and then you should look at toning them as well. If you plan on doing a lot of work into the darkroom or really getting into the darkroom, I really recommend this book, The Darkroom Cookbook. And it has uh, everything from how to design your darkroom to all sorts of different chemistry of using it. So if you really get into printing, I really recommend this book. Now, even these dark test strips here, I don't mind that it's dark so much and that it's a big mistake because sometimes when you make a mistake like this and it is darker, sometimes you can see something in the print that maybe you wouldn't have seen before. So don't think of uh, any kind of a failure. Always try to get something out of it. But even dark prints like this where they might not be what you're thinking, sometimes can give you a clue to a way you can go with the print. Here you can see the second test strip where it's much more clear and then now you know exactly where you can go with it. And then from there, I've taken it all the way into my final print here, which looks really nice. And that's just a really nice looking work print. I hope you like this version of how to make a photographic print. I know it's a basic one. It is for beginners. I'm helping some people out. If you would like to win this print, you still have a chance subscribe. I will look at all my subscribers on March 15th, 2021, and I'll randomly pick a person and I'll send this print to you anywhere you live in the world. It's been uh, quite a ride on creating this YouTube channel. The support I've gotten has been amazing. So thanks very much for coming along. I hope you're all safe. See you next time. And I'm going to get back to shooting real soon. Cheers.